welcome back to me playing video games. This is Darth Love, the Achievement Poacher, King of the Dumb Shits, Bad Gamer. I don't know, I could probably work in another title of some kind there. Shithead. I think King of the Dumb Shits already got that covered. No, doesn't matter. Point is, welcome back to me playing video games to try and get achievements. Now, there's no achievements for Night Child Republic 1. But, a lot of complaints I heard from people about me playing Night Child Republic 2 and not wanting to watch it is they have never played or seen anything about the first one. They've heard good things about both, but they have never played the first one. So, I'm... I decided to take down all my stuff for two because I have no idea what I had accomplished. And it was honestly, it was poor quality. You'll just miss out on a few achievements, which I can... As far as I know, I can pretty much explain as I go how to get those achievements anyway. So I'm going to play through this one first. Just one run straight through. I'm going to go with the canon uh, character, which of course unfortunately means I'll have to be a male character. Uh, and pure good. Uh, that's really... The only spoilers I'm going to give you is I'm going to be a male and pure good run, because that is the canon thing. Uh, I might look into if there's any other important canon stuff to know about, uh, but as of right now, that's all I know that I need to do. Uh, and I still have no idea how I'm going to upload it. I don't know if I'm going to be like, boom, here's the first planet, the second planet, and so on, and then you can see them all, or if I'm just going to be like, boom, here's the game. Let me know in the comments which one I did. Right. Um, but hey, let's just hop right in. New game. Here we go. I want to be a woman. This is so much more fun. Alright. So as far as I know, class means nothing for the canon. You can be a scoundrel, scout, or soldier. Um, I'm pretty sure I usually go scoundrel or scout. One of them is super high skills over uh, everything else, and I like I love me having some skill points. Skilled characters, best you can accomplish everything if you have skills. Uh, soldiers, they have a lot of feats and they're great for combat, but uh, outside of combat, you're useless. That being said, having a lot of skills is great until you get into a fight. Uh, do I want to do this the way I usually do it? Or do I, look at those. Look at those legs. Why would I want to play that? Why wouldn't I want to play a woman? So much better. Where, where are those? I'm getting out of hand. Uh, I don't know what to play. Let's, let's just do this. Male scoundrel. A skillful rogue that gets on... Gets by on stealth or guile. And male scout. An explorer most at home on the fringes of space. Male soldier, a battle-ready fighter with no equal in combat. And I think these are all the same. Yeah, they're the same. Okay. Uh, I'm honestly on the line between scout and soldier. I'm sorry, scoundrel. You waved at me. If I was I supposed to come over to you? This is tough, man. This is a tough choice. This is a really difficult. That one. I don't know what I clicked. I guess I'm a scout. Always go custom. Always custom character. First portrait. Let's see if we can find the one that looks most like me. It's close. No, 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 no. Hey! It's Jarhead! Can I, like, move the face? Nope, I can only get that. Okay. That used to be the main one I would go with, because that's what I thought I was going to end up looking like when I grew up. As you can see, times have changed. Well, I guess that's... Uh, I guess we're going to have to that. Alright, cool. I am bald man. Alright. The attributes of your character apply bonuses or penalties to everything from combat to skill checks to force powers. Check each attribute to see what aspect of gameplay it can affect. This is this is important. Which, it's a, it's a um, role-playing game, so of course they're important. Let's see here. Strength. Uh, strength measures physical power. A high strength adds modifiers to melee damage and chance to hit, which is important for characters that use... Sorry, Bun Bun. Apparently he wants to redecorate. Uh, which is important for characters that use close combat weapons, which I regularly do. Dexterity. Dexterity mean measures agility and reflexes. A high dexterity adds modifiers to ranged attack rolls, blasters, and grenades, 
and increases a character's defense rating, making them harder to hit. So, basically, strength, you do better with melee. Dexterity, you do better with guns and grenades, but it also affects your defense. So, like, honestly, if you're going tank character, you want high con, because constitution represents health and resilience. A high credit constitution adds modifiers to the vitality points gained at each level up. This is important for everyone, but essential for soldiers and Jedi guardians. So, tanks. It's essential to have lots of health. Dexterity makes it harder for people to hit you. So, really... Ugh. It's like, strength, you can hit harder. Dexterity, you can shoot harder, and people can't hit you. Uh, intelligence. Intelligence. Oh, yeah, I guess I already read Constitution. It's how many times you can get the shit knocked out of you before you actually get knocked the fuck out. Got it? Good. Intelligence. Intelligence represents knowledge and reasoning. A high intelligence adds modifiers to the number of points a character has to spend on essential skills. The higher your intelligence, the more skill points you get every level. Now, every single class gets a, a set amount of skill points, regardless at every level. If you have a zero modifier in your intelligence, uh, you get like one skill point per level as a soldier. Uh, I think it's like five or something with the other ones. It, it, it varies based on your class, but if you have a really high intelligence, you get a buttload more. Like, I think it's like one per every modifier, so it's still... I usually love having my intelligence boosted to shit, because I like my skills. Wisdom. Wisdom represents willpower and perception. A high wisdom adds modifiers to Jedi force points and force power saving throws. The force powers of a Jedi with high wisdom are also much harder to resist. So, wisdom makes it so you can resist force powers easier and your force powers are stronger. So if you want anything to do with force powers, whether it's fighting them, which you will have to fight them, just so you know, we're fighting Sith. They will be using the force on us. Need wisdom. But if you don't want to use um, force powers, you don't want to have it too, you don't need it too high, but you do want it high enough you can survive. Uh, charisma, another one that I do not dump. Uh, charisma represents personality and the ability to lead. High charisma, a high charisma modifier. A high charisma adds modifiers to force-related feats and powers that are very important to all Jedi classes. It is also central to any persuasive talker. You will have to be persuasive. Um, there are so many skills that you can just switch to one of your teammates, have them be really high in that skill, and they can do it for you. Lock picking, uh, hacking, all of them. You can get a droid, period. You're done. Most skills you don't need to do it yourself. Persuasion is only your character. No one else can talk for you. You have to be the persuasive one. So I never use charisma as a dump stat because I like being able to talk my way out of shit. It's very helpful. All right, let's see. Well, let's recommend it. Hmm. That's not bad. Yeah, honestly, the recommend is pretty good. Like, you want to get them all to 10. Minimum. Uh, no. no I want this up. Because uh, if you have less than 10, you have a minus one modifier. So my strength right now has a negative one to anything that gets affected by it. Whereas now... It's just flat zero. So, uh, that's, it's honestly much better that way. Uh, dexterity plus three with 16. So it's every two over, two points over 10, just like any regular D&D character stat, you get plus one. So it's just basic D&D there. So those are my attributes. On to skills. Each of your character's skills has a number associated with it. This is the skill rank. And determines how good the character is with the skill. When using the skill to perform an action, the rank is compared against the difficulty check DC, which again, straight D&D stuff. This is it's really this has helped me get into D&D, is because of how close this is to regular D&D. It's not exact. I know there's gonna be a lot of people out there who play D&D that are like this is nothing like it. There are a lot of similarities that can help new players get into it if they enjoy this. For example, to open a lock with a DC of 15, take your skill rank at security, plus a wisdom modifier, and roll a d20. If the total is 15 or greater, the lock is open. <laughs> okay, so I have 20 points to use. And, oh, it's not going to show me right out. I have to actually check. Okay. So, um, I guess I'll just first read through each of the skills. Computer use uh, is intelligence. So, uh, 
you get with it said with the DC, you get uh, whatever how many skill how many ranks you have in it, plus your the attribute associated. So intelligence will go into that, which I have 14 in, which means I get plus two to my intelligence. So that's an immediate plus two to all computer use checks. That's what's going to be related attributes for all of them, is based on whatever this skill is. Again, straight D&D. If you've played D&D before, this is all going to be well known to you. <laughs> uh, computer this allows a character to slice a computer program to slice computer programs using disposable logic rams called computer spikes. A uh, character might disable a gun turrets. A character might disable gun turrets or flood a patrol area with more complicated tasks requiring more spikes. Okay. A high rank in the skill reduces the number of spikes required by one to a minimum of one for every four points total, including attribute score modifiers. That's important. Um, there are things that require, like, five spikes to do it. If you have a high computer use skill, that can get, go down to one. Which can be great, because sometimes you won't have any fucking computer spikes. And you want those damn computer spikes. Um, but yeah, like, computer, uh, computer use? I love it. It's so very helpful. Demolitions. Also intelligence. Uh, demolitions can be used to set, recover, or disarm mines. Disarm doesn't require so much... Um, Disarming landmines doesn't require that much of a check in demolitions. Recovery does. It takes a lot. If you fail, there's also a chance of it exploding on you. Which is bad. Obviously. Uh, setting landmines, I don't actually know what the check is on that, or how difficult it is to fail. But yeah. Uh, such devices are either low, DC 15 to set, medium, uh, DC 20 to set, or high difficulty, DC 25. Attempting to disarm the mine adds plus 5 to the DC. Attempting to recover the mine adds plus 10. That's what I was talking about. So yeah, setting a landmine is uh, starts at like difficulty 15. If you're trying to disarm the same landmine, it immediately becomes 20. And if you're trying to pick up that landmine for yourself, it's now 25. So it it it's much more difficult to do those things, obviously. <laughs> Stealth related attribute is of course dexterity because it's all about moving quickly and un unnoticed. Uh, Stealth governs the use of camouflage devices to enter stealth mode. That bothers me. So you can have a really high stealth skill. It doesn't mean anything unless you have a belt that makes you turn invisible. That bothers me a lot because that means there's no use for this skill unless you have that item. And you're going to get a lot of other items that actually help you in your belt slot. It's like, do I really want to have my stealth on me all the time? Or do I want to have better items? And it's just, it, it bothers me that I have to have that in my inventory slots. I know they can just carry it around everywhere because there's no um, inventory capacity, but it still bugs me. Uh, if a character equips such a device and activates stealth mode, opponents must make an awareness check versus the character's stealth skill or be unable to detect them. Even if the character is in direct line of sight, a character in stealth, stealth mode can set, disable, and recover mines, use computers, uh, and repair droids at open doors or containers. Party members will not automatically enter combat while, this was, uh, while in this mode. Combat cancels stealth mode, so if you start a fight, or a fight happens for any reason, you're immediately out of stealth. That'll make more sense when we get into the game as well. Uh, stealth mode will not work without a camouflage unit. Units of higher quality grant a bonus to the skill. This is true. Awareness related is wisdom. Again, no. uh, awareness covers the ability for a character to spot objects or enemies hidden by stealth. Uh, if a successful check of this skill is made against the stealth skill of an enemy or the DC of a mine, because mines are technically stealth, if you don't have a high enough awareness, you will not spot them. This is a thing that took me way too long to figure out, because I'm dumb. <laughs> uh, where was I? Uh, against the uh, enemy of a mine, uh, the, enemy, the enemy or object is noticed and becomes visible. Awareness is always active, so you do not have to actively use awareness, it's always going and then it's constantly rolling to see if you spot the object the closer you get. Persuade. Charisma. Again, you are the only one who can use this skill. Very important. That I don't like. We'll get into class and cross-class after I'm done reading each one. Only the main player character can select this skill during level up. Pers I, I understand why. I'm like I said I don't like it, but I understand why it's a thing. I don't like it because of the fact that it can be something that your character is shitty at. And every other skill you have the option to be like, Hey, Mr. Robot, go hack a computer. Hey, Mr. Friend with a robot arm, go pick up that landmine because you're better at it than I am. Hey, 
talkative person who likes talking to people, how about you chat up this person instead of big angry me? No? <laughs> Shit. Um, persuade options appear in dialogue when interesting or sensitive information is available that a character might otherwise be reluctant to reveal. When selected, rank, uh, when selected ranks, rank in this skill is compared with how extreme the request is. Difficulty, class, low, medium, high, uh, relative to the player level. A guard, a guard might easily agree to increase a bounty, but convincing him to leave his post would be much harder. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Repair, related attribute, intelligence. Repair allows a character to fix disabled mechanical devices like droids using disposable packages of parts. The number of part kits required increases with the difficulty of the repair. Uh, the skill reduces the number of parts required by one to the minimum of one for every four points total, including attribute score modifiers. The skill also modifies the amount of vitality points recovered when party member droids use repair kits, advanced repair kits, and construction kits on themselves to repair combat damage. Alright, that was a lot of information. Basically, repair works the same way as computer use, because computer use, you can hack computers to get them to do things. You can also more or less hack robots with repair skill. But you also have robot companions that cannot use med packs to heal because they don't have health. Like, you can't just go like, oh, look at that, you're leaking oil, let's throw a band-aid on that. It does jack shit. But you can get in a repair part, you can fix the hose. And um, the higher your repair skill, the better, the more effective those repair parts are which is good. Uh, security. Security is used to access electronic locking devices. Once a character invests points in the skill, it becomes one of the default options on targeted doors and containers. Security spikes can grant a bonus to the skill, and any in inventory will also appear as a default option on the targeted doors and containers. Characters with no points invested cannot use this skill. Security is how you open doors that don't want to be opened. It's, it, it's pretty straightforward if you have... Security is lockpicking. Just that easy. Treat injury. Uh, oh yeah, security is wisdom. Uh, repair is... Wow, okay, so wisdom's also skill-heavy boosting. Thing I didn't know. Why did I not know that? Feels like a thing I should have already figured out by now. So treat injury. Uh, treat injury improves the amount of damage healed when a med pack is used. Adding the modifier uh, rank to the number of vitality points healed. Advanced med packs and life support packs apply modifiers to the user's skill, increasing the amount healed again. Treat injury is healing. It's just, it's just that. Um, okay. Next thing to know is class and cross class. I know that I've been talking a long time, but this is an RPG game. There is a lot of information. It does get interesting, I swear. All right, so uh, I'm sure you've noticed in computer use, demolition, stealth. Why is stealth cross class? I'm a scout. That makes no fucking sense. Does that mean scoundrel's the only one that has stealth as a class skill? Regardless, okay. So class skills. So see how it says class skill one point cost. That means I have 20 remaining points. I put in one. I have one rank. Stealth costs me two points because it is a cross class skill. Um, basically, computer use and all that, like, computer use, demolitions, uh, awareness, repair, and treat injury are all things that, as a scout, I already have some training in, so it's easier for me to learn. Cross-class kills are things that are like, let's say, um, how do I explain this? Uh, you're a, mm, no, it doesn't work. Yeah, you're a doctor. You're really good at treat injury, because that's what you were trained to do. Now someone hands you a fucking, um, the controls to a bulldozer. Yeah, you might be able to figure it out because you're a smart person, but you aren't as skilled in that field. Like, this is a completely different thing. It's not something you'd understand as easily. So you would go into it like, I don't, I don't know, so it would be harder for you to learn because it's not something you're already used to. I know what you're thinking, but just learn it, boom, it's now a cross skill. That would make sense. <laughs> but that's not how it works yet. As far as, as far as I know, there are feats you can get, at least in the second game, I can't remember if they're in the first game as well, that can make cross-class skills into class skills. So if you have a, a, a skill that you know you want to have and make it class skills, so that way you can get it higher, you can learn that with a feat. But feats, it's a whole nother, whole nother issue. Alright, uh, what do you recommend here? All my class skills, I'm assuming. Ooh, another key thing. So four is currently the maximum because it is your level plus three for at least, I think it's plus three. Your level plus three for 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's your level plus three is how many uh, skill points you can have, or ranks you can have at any class skill. And I'm fairly certain it's, um, cross class skills is half that rounded down. So because my maximum is currently four, that's two. When this goes up to five, so when I go up to level two, this is still two. Because it would be 2.5, which you have to round down. Um, and then, of course, at six, or level three, it becomes three. Scoundrel's the one I wanted, but I got a lot of skill points, so I guess I, I, guess I can live with that. <sighs> Do I want any points in demolitions? Yeah, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to go with. So I got the four computer use, because I know I'm going to need it. Same with repair. Ooh, yes, I want both. Do yes. I'm going to get that droid pretty quick. I want awareness. It's super helpful. Persuade. Need it. Okay. So I marked down my computer use because I'm just going to let that be one of the droid things. I do want some skill points in it because I don't want to be useless. Uh, demolitions. Again, I want to be able to have some ability to set landmines. Uh, stealth. I'll just let one of my companions rely on that. Awareness. Necessary. Very necessary. Uh, persuade. Again. <laughs> Uh, I kept repair, because if I'm going to trick between computer use repair or security, since security is cross-class, it's not an option. So I'm going to have to leave that for one of my companions. Um, I want repair, because I can help repair my robots. Because I'm going to need a robot companion, since they're going to be covering computer use and security, and treat injury for myself. Because you want to be able to heal yourself. Alright, so that is skills. Feats. <clears throat> Some feats allow you to use special items like heavy armor or implants. Other feats modify saving scrolls, saving throws, and skill checks during the game. And some feats, power attack, are used during combat. Check the description for details on the specific feat. Okay, so I guess first, here's all the ones I start with. It's it's a long list, there's a lot of information. I could read through... Oh, uh, do I want to? You know what? I'm going to read through some of these. So first off, obviously... Armor efficiency light, armor efficiency medium, and armor efficiency heavy. It makes it so you can use heavier armor. So each armor thing is either going to be light, medium, heavy. I think there's clothes that don't count as any of them. You need to be able to use light armor, medium armor to use medium armor, heavy armor to use the really big stuff. And it's it's just basic stuff. Uh, flurry. Fetal as a character to make an extra melee attack during the round. Uh, the character suffers a minus four to defense while using this feat for three seconds afterwards, uh, i.e. an enemy's attack. They also suffer a minus four penalty to all attacks that round. So you attack twice. Uh, it is just one attack, right? Yeah, you attack twice in melee, but you're now easier to hit, and it's harder for you to hit from for the rest of that combat or that round. Uh, ooh, implants. So, implants are an entire item slot. You can only use implants if you have implant levels for them. They change that in 2 and make it so it's just your con score that uh, decides whether or not you can use implants, which I think is much better. But uh, we'll go into why I think some things in 2 are better than 1 when we get to 2. Uh, rapid Shot is just flurry for guns. Uh, I have... This feat gives a character basic training to use the standard blaster pistol and weapon type. So I'm better with pistols. And if I get weapon focus, I actually do better with pistols. This just makes it so I can use them effectively. Same with rifles. I cannot use heavy heavy rifles. I can use melee weapons. This is an important one. This feat gives the character one extra vitality point every time they level up. This bonus is retroactive for levels previously gained. So if you get this bonus at level 20, it immediately gives you 20 extra health points. So it's very useful. Not going to get it at level 1. As great as much as I love it. Because it's retroactive, I am going to wait as I figure out what combat style I'm going to use. I don't really have a lot of options here. Which is fine. Um, dueling. This character uh, characters that focus on using single one-handed weapons in battle gain a plus 1 to their attack and a plus 1 to their defense due to the efficiency of this form of combat. This applies to both ranged and melee weapons. So if you're using only one pistol or a melee weapon, just one melee weapon, so just like dueling with a sword. This is what you want to go with, because it makes you better with that. Um, I'm not going to use any of those, I'm just going to go up here. Dual uh, two-weapon fighting is the reverse. This reverse uh, feat provides an attack penalty 
is re reduces the attack penalty of a character wielding double-bladed weapon or two weapons, one in each hand. The normal penalties of minus six in the main hand, minus ten in the off hand, are reduced to minus six in both. Uh, use of a balanced weapon in the offhand can further reduce the attack penalty down to minus four and minus six. So basically, if you're using two pistols, you are not going to hit twice as many things. It's actually going to be harder for you to hit things. You are shooting twice as much, so you have a higher chance of hitting because of it, its statistics, but you have a reduced actual accuracy. With two have been fighting, eventually you get to the point where you no longer have any negatives at all, which is great. Um... If you want to be doing uh, double-bladed weapons, so like uh, Darth Maul's lightsaber, which they ex they, they have it. they have them in the game, because why wouldn't they? Um, or just wielding rifles, I think, actually count. No, yeah, no. Um, rifles don't count as a two a double-bladed weapon, probably because it's still technically just one weapon. It's just big. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so if you want to wield two small weapons, two melee weapons, or a double-bladed weapon. There's a fucking fruit fly. And I'm going to kill it. I think Bunny's sleeping. That's what you want to go with if that's what you're choosing. Alright. Um, caution. This feast gives plus one skill to both demolitions and stealth. Now, if you don't have any points in either of those, this gives you nothing in that. So if you go all the way up to here... Uh, Speed gives plus three bonus to demolitions and stealth. Replace so you'd have plus three in both demolition and stealth. If you have not put any points in stealth, which currently we have not, that will still put us at zero to my knowledge. It doesn't automatically go boom. You've gone up to you now have three in stealth. You still have nothing. You have to have at least one point in it first, and then this will help. You. Um, critical strike. Okay, so critical strike and uh, sniper shot are the same thing. Uh, it, the only difference is Critical Strike is for melee and Sniper Shot is for range. They have them... It, there's, there's only three types of um, special moves, and they have them both for range and melee, but they're two separate things. So Critical Strike, this feat doubles the critical threat range of melee attacks or ranged attack if you take Sniper Shot. <laughs> uh, E.g., if a weapon needs to roll a 20 to get a critical hit, uh, the result is now on a 19 or a 20. So when you're rolling a d20... In um, to hit in D&D. &D. You roll a 20, it gets a critical hit, it does additional damage. Sometimes it's double damage. Now, some guns and weapons have that critical range being like 18, 19, or 20. This makes that easier to get a critical hit, more or less, is all it is. Uh, if the attack hits, the target's also stunned for 6 seconds, unless they make a fortitude save at a DC of the attacking character's level, which is currently 1, and the attacking character's strength, which is also currently 0. <laughs> I think that's just his melee. Let's see if Sniper Shot is also strength. Oh, so with Sniper Shot, it is versus my intelligence. That's good to know. Uh, this feat also lowers defense by negative five when used. Sniper Shot works with only ranged weapons. All right, does this reduce? Yeah, so the this feat lowers defense by negative five when used. And I believe that's our defense. So when we use Critical Shot or, sorry, Critical Strike or Sniper Shot, our defense is lowered by five because everything has to have a drawback. Uh, empathy. This feat gives plus one in Persuade, Awareness, and Treat Injury. Very important, all three of those. I might actually end up taking that. Uh, this gives plus one to Repair, Security, Computer Use. Also very important. Gearhead, makes sense. Uh, conditioning. This provides this feat provides a plus one to all saving throws, reflecting the character's excellent physical conditioning. Way to rub it in. That's actually the one I might go with, because that's not retroactive. Uh, it's not going to give me plus one per level like uh, toughness is, but having improved saving throws is great. Yeah, I think I might go with that. Uh, power attack, where is... Oh, they're right, okay. So power attack or power blast. Power attack adds plus five damage to the next attack, but also a negative three to hit. Used to quickly dispatch groups of easy-to-hit opponents only applies to melee. Uh, yeah, so it's basically... This has the best drawback, honestly. You fire out a hugely powerful attack that has less chance to hit. So if you're higher, high, high, uh, if you have a high chance to hit, just go for it. Whereas the other ones, oh man, I wish I understood rounds better than I do. I am not a like super experienced D&D player, if that's not clear. So if anyone's watching this who is, I apologize for my lack of knowledge. 
Um, but I can't remember if a round is until I don't think a round is to make the end of the combat. I think it's after everyone takes a turn, um, then a round's over. <sighs> that doesn't make sense unless that's only their way of saying that the additional attack is has a negative four to hit. And then this one. His feet lowers defense by negative five when used. See, it's not one hit, which is why I believe that the uh, the critical ones make it so your defense is worse, which makes sense because you're so focusing on getting that shot. And because you're so focused on that, you are much easier to be shot. So that's why your defense goes down. Makes sense to me. Um, I'm tempted by Power Blast, but I think I'm going to have to say... Yeah, I'm going to go with Empathy. Because I'm a scout, I'm not going to get feats near, like, um... Soldiers get feats every other level, which is the most frequently most frequent way to get feats. Scoundrels get them very infrequently, and scouts are somewhere in between. I think the scout is like the in between for both um, skill points and feats, because soldiers get a buttload of feats and no skill points, more or less no skill points. Scoundrels get a lot of skill points, not a lot of feats, and scouts are in between, hence them being in between. Uh, but yeah, so empathy, good name. Furk Khan! I am Darth Love. Good. Okay. And play. It's just that easy. Um, it only took me, oh my god, it took me a half hour to make a character. Why did everything... Okay, so the cutscene is at least loading on the, the thing. Wow. So, um, the game's resolution is only 800 by 600. It's not large. And it has an option for you to expand, like make the game bigger, uh, and make the resolution better. All it does is change the resolution to be bigger, but the game itself is still 800 by 600 in the middle of it. So it just adds a giant fucking border to cover all that extra space you just made. So it doesn't actually make the resolution any better. Which is why I'm playing it on 800 by 600 That being said, the cutscenes are smaller <laughs> than 800 by 600 So my computer was just like, Ugh! as it, the, the resolution on my main screen just shrunk for seemingly no reason. Oh, I'm going to get demonetized for this game. Oh, I probably just cut off the music. I also haven't been reading anything. Sorry. Um, things are happening. I'm sure you were reading it while listening to me. And if not, you can go back over and try and read it. Shit. <laughs> Do I want to try and... Cut. Right here. Pause. Play it again. Have me read it to you. Star Wars. As dang too long. Let's, let's uh, speed it up, guys. <clears throat> Knights of the Old Republic. 4,000 years before the rise of the Galactic Empire. The Republic verges on collapse. Darth Malak, last surviving apprentice of the Dark Lord Revan, has unleashed an invincible... Invincible Sith Armada upon an unsuspecting galaxy. Crushing all resistance, Malak's war of conquest has left the Jedi Order scattered and vulnerable as countless knights fall in battle, and many more swear allegiance to the new Sith Master. In the skies above the Outer Rim world of Taurus, a Jedi battle fleet engages the forces of Darth Malak in a desperate effort to halt the Sith's galactic domination. There you go, I read it for you. Merry birthday time thing. I don't know. There you go. I read it. Happy? I hope so. An epic space battle is unfolding. It was probably talked about in the credits thing, but I still haven't actually read it. I've, I've read it in the past, but uh, the details of it are foggy at best. I think the resolution is about to like freak out again. So it did. Hey, it came back pretty quick though. And there I am in my underpants. Howdy, Darth Love. I'm not shaving my facial hair down to that. I look dumb. No 
got like a weird egg shaped head. It's all the fat. It's because I'm so fat. I don't know what I'm doing. Sorry. We've been ambushed by a Sith battle fleet. Really? And our spire is under attack. Hurry up. We don't have much time. We don't have much time. Uh, who are you? I'll have to click this answer. So, like so, who are you? Or the end our spire. Um, you know what? The end our you spire. Fall out of your bunk and hit your head? The yes. end our spire is the ship we're stationed on. This ship. You probably don't even know who I am, do you? Not I'm Trask Olgo, ensign okay. with the Republic fleet. I'm your bunkmate here on the end our spire. We work opposite shifts. I guess that's why you haven't seen me before. Now hurry up! We have to find Bastila. We have to make sure she makes it off the ship alive. Okay. Who's Bastila? Forget it! I'm looking after my own skin. As I said, pure good. Who's Bastila? Bastila is the commanding officer on the Endar Spire. Oh. Well, not an officer, really. But she's huh? the one in charge of this mission. One of our primary duties is to guarantee her survival in the event of an enemy attack. Okay. You swore an oath just like everyone else on this mission. I now swore it's an oath? time to make good on that oath. I heard what everyone's saying about you. You've explored the farthest reaches of the galaxy. You've visited planets I've never even heard of. People with your skills and Tattoo abilities me? are hard to find. It's no wonder the Republic recruited you for this mission. But now's the time to prove yourself. I know you're a scout and not a soldier. The Bastila needs all troops at her side during this attack. Sorry, I did what now? Oath or no oath? Oath or no oath? I'm heading to the escape pods. All right, let's go help us. Huh? Hurry up and grab your gear. You need to suit up so we can get out of here. Sounds good. Where can I get my equipment? You can move the mouse to the edges of the screen to rotate the camera. Alternately, moving the mouse while holding down the right mouse button will rotate the camera as well. Um. Uh, oh. Okay. To move towards the footlocker, hold down the right. Okay. And no. Left no. No. Okay. Uh oh. Okay, no, I need to fix that. There we go. Okay, so if you have mouse movement on, the like, this constantly moves the camera. So if you want to click on something, it's not happening. Man, there is something wrong with my shriveled little arms. Alrighty. You can use the mouse to select eligible targets. While in combat, only hostiles will be targeted. That's that's cool. Can I, like, thank you? Move the mouse to the edges of the screen to rotate the camera. Alternately, moving the mouse to move... You've already told me all this. Okay. Why did you tell me that again? Foot locker, please. That was frightening. All right, so I got a cardio package. Nice adrenaline accelerator, blaster pistol, short sword, clothing, and two bed packs. Awesome. Uh, and I gained 50 experience for that. All right, so obviously got to put on me clothes. Got to keep some modesty. Cardio package. This is one of the implants I was talking about. Because I have level one implant, I can use it. It just gives me a plus one constitution. Awesome. Uh, okay, so you weird shields here. Headbands, gloves, belts. This is also where most stealth, I think there are... No, all stealth regulators go on the, the belt. There are things that boost your stealth going other places, but the only way to become stealth is there. And right hand, we're going blaster pistol. So, uh, so this is what I'm talking about, critical threat range. If I roll a, t roll a 20, we don't see any of the rolling. It does double damage. Uh, it has a range, that's its damage. Balanced, so that means if I'm using two of them, it no, it has plus two uh, to try and counteract the negative if it is in my offhand. So if I have two pistols, this one is good to have as a secondary weapon. Short sword, I believe, is the same. Yeah, so it's basically the ex it is legitimately the exact same stats. There is flavor text. Fuck it. The most common wep common ranged weapon in the galaxy is the basic blaster pistol, firing a bolt of intense coherent light powered by the replaceable power pack. Short sword. Disregarded by most modern warriors, a good short sword can still serve well in combat if the user is skilled. We are not at all. Cardio baggage. This implant micromanages the cardiovascular system, effectively increasing the user's constitution faster and further than hard work and exercise might. When can I get one? These are simple garments that protect little more than the modesty of the wearer. Yeah, they have no bonuses, which is why you don't need any armor class to wear them. Which is helpful, because I don't have any armor abilities. There's my skip clothes. I'm basically Han Solo. Cool. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, there's nothing else here. All right, Trask. Okay, let's move out. We should stick together. You'll have more success with a party than on your own. The top is still slowly... <laughs> Uh, Trask has joined your party. Left-click this response to go to the party selection. Okay, cool. 
<clears throat> in most areas, you can use the party selection screen to quickly switch married members in and out as you need them. This is done instantly and without having to return to your base. Characters switched out of your party will wait for you back at your base. That I don't know what that was, but cool. Because um, of the attack, this room is in lockdown. It's pretty but basic stuff. I've My God, the, <laughs> the bars yeah, are having issue getting in. How do I use you to unlock the door? Okay. So, uh, switching is tap. Perfect. All right. So this is what. Uh, adrenaline Accelerator, it just boosts things. I can't remember which ones... Whatever. When we get more things, I'll look through my inventory and read different items to you. Now that the door is open, you better take the lead again. Okay. Switching Darth Love back to Party Leader. Okay, so it just does it automatically. Got it. Uh, you can use the... Yeah, I, I got it. This is Carthel Nassi. The Sith are threatening to overrun our position. We can't oh. hold out long against their firepower. All hands to the bridge! That was Karth right. contacting us on our portable communicators. He's Who? one of the Republic's best pilots. He's okay. seen more combat than the rest of the Endar Spires crew put together. If he says right. things are bad, you better believe it. We have to get to the bridge to help defend Bastila. There's a map of the Endar Spire and a copy of Karth's message in your electronic journal, just in case we get separated. Okay, let's move out. Uh, the active quest screen includes important... Yeah, okay, good. Wait. You received a message from Karth. That's great. Ah. Okay, so I didn't even know I could look through that. That's neat. Map. Yeah, so this is just the map of the uh, Andar Spire here. Uh, this is our skills. We already know about all that. This is our inventory. Yeah, thank you. Adrenaline. Single use gives plus four to dexterity and increases movement speed. Ooh. A shot of this enhancer provides temporary boost in the dexterity of the user. The effect wears off for a short time and side effects are considered minimal. Stim bonus uh, that affect the same statistics do not stack. Okay, so you can't take several, like you can't take an adrenaline accelerant and then like another like super adrenaline accelerant to get like a plus eight. It, you can only use one. They don't stack. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, I think that's really all I need to show in here. All right. So, let's go down here. Hello, little robot friend. Good talking to you. Through the door. That door is locked. So I don't have is. the codes to open it. What? Switch me to the party leader so you can use my security skills to slice into the access panel and open the door. Oh, yeah, I have zero in security, so it doesn't even show up. Okay. All right, so if you'll notice, it doesn't show up as anything for me. I can just open the door. But him, he has security, because he actually has a security skill. Oh, hey, Republic people. Sith people. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. These Sith must be the advanced boarding party. For Why am I already in the hallway? Why are you the one screaming for the Republic if I'm out in the hallway already? The game pauses when you sight an enemy, and the selection reticle will show you show up in red. You can use the mouse to select other hostile targets. This autopause can be disabled in the option screen. Nah, I like the autopause. Uh, yeah, I, I got it. So, attacks, uh... I want to say force powers here, and it, there's there's different things that show up here for different options for combat. Uh, there's also, of course, still things down here you can select, all the, the usual stuff. I'm going to stick with basic attack. Whenever you spot an enemy, yeah, that's, that's great. That's cool. All right. Contrast. Good two. Bop, bop. Bop, bop. Perfect. Yeah. You can move around in combat, and sometimes it will help you, especially if you are the weak and fragile, like I might end up being because I'm not playing a soldier. <gasps> the robot! I never knew you, but I loved you. You will be missed. I wish I could, like, kneel down, but I can't crouch like Batman could. I can't shove my butt into high there, people's faces. Oh god, yes, I got it. Thank you. Just, just shoot him. Trask, you want to do something? I got shot. It hurt. Come on. Shoot him again. There we go. You know, for having such a high dexterity as I do, 16, I should be hitting a little bit more than I am. Remains? I like looting things. I'm pretty sure this first episode is just going to be the tutorial ship. Uh, I might show... Aren't you supposed to disappear? Damn it. Um, I might show the cutscene of us landing, but I'm not going to show any of the first planet in this video. This is just, the first video is going to be the ship, especially since character creation apparently took a fucking half hour. I don't know how long these episodes are going to be, and I still haven't fully decided what I'm going to do with them. I just got to 
buttload of weapons. I probably should be paying attention to what I'm doing. Oh, I got a long sword. So, I now have two short swords, which I can use for dual building because they have uh, the balance. But I also have a long sword, which I could put in my main hand and then put one of the short swords in my offhand and it would still get the balance perfect. But I use guns and. Oh, combat suit! Light armor! Yeah! Defense bonus plus four, max dexterity bonus, so it does reduce your dexterity. It can reduce your dexterity. If you have um, a plus six in your dexterity, which I currently have 16, gives you plus three, so six would have to be like 22. Math checks out. Uh, if you have a 22 in your dexterity and you put on this armor, it negates one of those plus ones. It immediately becomes plus five instead because it's harder to move. Uh, even the most frugal of mercenaries know they need at least some protection from the rigors of combat, although suits of this type are recommended for light skirmishes only. Yeah, well, it's all I've got, so uh, we'll take it. All right, much better. That's what it came from. Did I... <laughs> Back to things I like about two more than one. It tells me if the containers can be more of my allies. Ah! Hello, friends, I'm here to... Oh, shit. Oh, oh. shit. Yeah! You go, Republic Troopers! Oh, sh shit. That's no good. Well, I guess it's just me and these two. Hey! <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. I can I can pause. Uh, Spacebar pauses. Oh, this is what you did to my friends. Perfect. I'm not moving. That's fine. I'll just shoot him. Oh, goody. Back up. Hey, Trask. You want to get over there? Do something helpful? No, you just want to stand in front of me. Cool. Luckily, I don't shoot him right now. My health's getting lower than I'd like. Perfect. Oh, God, there's another one. All right, so I'm just going to do this. And, um, there we go. Hello, friend. There we go. Still look around, which is good. Perfect. Is there anyone else over there? No, Trask, you're good. Good. Uh, no, that's the door we actually want, so we're not going over there. Yet. I want to make sure there's no lootables. Come on, guns. Money. Oh, well, money's good too. I like money. Money is useful. Money can be used to ex can be exchanged for goods and services. Ooh, frag grenades also useful. You saw why they're useful. You can fling them at people and use them to kill your allies, apparently. Which I think that's what that spoilers for what's on the other room. Um. I think that's what the component of the cutscene was, is the guy threw the hand grenade in there and it killed both the Republic Troopers and his own Imperial Troopers, and I think that's literally there to be like, hey, guess what? You can use friendly fire damage with a grenade. It's Dark Jedi! Oh, no. This fight is too much for us! We better stay back! All, right. All we do is get in the way! Okay, let's just stand here and watch them. Wow, this is exciting. You just fell over when you didn't... That was one of the Damn. Jedi accompanying Bastila. Shit. Damn, we could have used your help. We can still take our lightsaber. Like, seriously. All these people have guns. Why have I not gotten a gun yet? I'm upset. Hey, good job, Trask. Fuck you. Alright, let's do rapid shot. Whoa, 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 why are we doing this? I don't know if that was rapid shot or not. All right, let's see what we got for the Yay, a med pack. Oh, and the Jedi has... Oh, adrenal strength and a vibration cell. We cannot use either of those yet. Trask and bridge. That's it, huh? There's nothing other down here. Okay. Well, God damn it, Trask. Wait a second. Trask, what the hell am I doing? Okay, what do you got here? Just that? Here you go, buddy. Give me your damn blaster pistol. I'm gonna do a wield. They're balanced. I'm allowed. The bridge is just beyond that door. You so it is. Equip your melee weapon. There isn't much room on the bridge, and it's no. suicide to use a blaster in close quarters. I should I equip a melee disagree. weapon too. Done. Either that, or I'll have to stay back and use my blaster. How about I stay back? What if they have lightsabers? Yeah, that's fine. Anyway, um, do I want to heal you? I really don't care. Let's go, Trask. We'll in close quarters on the oh my god, you're going to make me do it. Melee weapon before we go through that door. Skip. Fine. Pricksicles. There. Happy. Oh, look at that. 
Team of Cook Gun Bag. I, I can! I am shocked. I am shocked. Suicide in close range, eh? That was an amazing. Off the ship, there's nothing stopping them from blasting the Indar Spire into galactic dust. That's true. I leveled up. I'm gonna just do that. So skills. Um, no, not yet. I have four skill points. I want that and that. I can't do anything with that, as I said, not until next level. I want that. Yes, I want that. Not yet. Actually, yes. Computer use. Or do I want to save it? Yeah, I'm going to save my skill point, because then next level I can use it for a persuade. Which, again, you'll see. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, do I want to go just decide right now I'm going to be dual wielding pistols? Because I may end up switching to a rifle. I'm kind of tempted to switch to a rifle. This would not give me a bonus if I had a rifle, though. And I don't think this would either, because double bladed weapon or two weapons. I'm pretty sure you don't get attack penalty with uh, rifles. Dual pistols or rifles. Uh, where is... You know what? Just to circumvent the entire thing. Conditioning. Here we go. Screw combat. Yay, remains. But seriously, man. You did great. Backpack. Rifle. Oh, uh, third blaster pistol. Great. I put it in my teeth and go Zoro, Zoro, Zoro on it. Sweet. Oh, it's one of my dead companions. Whoops. Hey, a dead enemy. I'll loot him happily. He had six bucks in his pocket. Nice. Alright. Is this the door? This is the door. I'm just gonna do this. No need to read into that. I don't know why you're still sure. clothed, Trask, but okay. Do, 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 do. This door. Something behind here. Where did you get that sword? That is not a sword. Dark I had. Jedi. I'll try to hold him off. You get to the escape pods. Go! Sounds good. You are going to die in a second. Trask, you will be missed. You were a loyalist to the very fucking end. He's seriously like he's the most this loyal. This is Carthel Nassi on your ever. personal communicator. I'm right. tracking your position through the Endar Spire's life support systems. Basilisk escape pod is away. You're the Good. last surviving crew member on the Endar Spire. No, oh. I can't wait for you much longer. You have to get to the escape pods. So Trask is already dead. Cool. Uh, I, in the time it took me to walk through a door, I am not shocked. I'm kind of sad, because as I said, good working guy. He worked hard. I don't know if my chance to hit gets better as I get closer, but uh, I'm not taking that chance. But I do seem to be hitting a lot more frequently with two weapons than I did with one. Is there nothing to loot here? Well, fine. Fuck you, then. What's through this door? Oh, look, it's broken. Or almost broken. Hi! I'm just gonna shoot you a bunch. Yes, you stand there and take it like a good boy. That sounded much more rapey than I was supposed to. Be careful. Ah. There's a whole squad of Sith troopers on the other side of that door. Okay. You need to find some way to thin their numbers. You could reprogram the damaged assault droid to help you. If you have enough repair, repair skills, or you could use computer spikes to slide computer into the rooms, terminal computer use. and use the Endar Spire security systems against the Sith. All right, so yeah, this is it, it's still we're in tutorial ship. Footlocker. Hey, look at that! Computer spikes and repair parts. Shocking. All right, so we can go over here. Computer use, and we don't need the tutorial. So, boom! Look, there's a camera. It shows uh, all the people over there, and I can overload the power conduit with four of my five computer spikes. And it'll kill all them in there. Or we can go over here, combat droid, reactivate the droid. So I can activate the droid shields with three repair parts, and engage it in patrol mode with another three repair parts. So engaging in shields makes it harder for it to kill. Obviously, it has shields. And patrol mode makes it walk directly into that room with them, which would take six of the seven. Now, repair always is going to take more fucking parts than computer uses. So I'm going to use the computers, computer use right now for two reasons. One, 
Computer use is not my good skill. Period. I, I, I so I want to salvage, uh, keep as many of those repair parts as possible for times when I don't have the option to just use one or the other. So I'd rather have an abundance of repair parts than uh, computer spikes. At this moment, anyway. Med pack. This guy in red was probably a boss. Ooh, ion blaster. Uh, okay, so. Ion blaster is a pistol. Hey, it's balanced too. So it does less damage than Battle Blaster Pistol, because it's 1 to 6 versus 1 to 4, but it does plus 1 to 10 damage versus droids. So it does less damage to everyone overall, like it has less damage, but it can do an additional up to like 10 damage if you're fighting a droid, which is great. And I'm going to have to remember that I have that. I didn't want to equip it yet, because we're not fighting droids yet. So, You've made it just in time. Yes, I do. one active escape pod left. Come on, Sweet. we can hide out on the planet below. Is there room for me to sit in there, or do I have to get in your lap? Did I say that out loud? Uh, how do I know I can trust you? Who are you? I'm a soldier with the Republic, like you. Oh. We're the last two crew members left in the oh. first fire. Basila's escape pod's already gone, so there's you no reason me. for us to stick around here and get shot by the Sith. Now, come on, eh. there'll be time for questions later. True, okay. Um, <clears throat> so, once I jump into this escape pod, I'm pretty sure it actually says, yeah. This is the last escape pod and your only hope of survival. So as soon as I use the escape pod, tutorial ship is done. So I'm not going to use that yet. Instead, I'm going to end this episode here. Uh, that is episode one of Knights of the Republic 1. Next episode, we're going to be going down to the planet of Taurus. It's either Taurus or Telos. Yeah, it's very close to the fucking starting planet of, episode, of uh, KOTOR 2. Shocking! Different planet, though. Despite so many similarities, we'll get into that later. <clears throat> For now, that's the end of this episode. Either look forward to the next one when I manage to finish Telos, Taurus, Taurus, Taurus. Or go ahead and watch the next one. It might already be up. I don't know yet. We'll have to wait and see. You already know. I don't. So you guys have a good night.